What's good, Washington fans? Um, I, I meant to put this out yesterday, but I was super busy. Sundays has just been very busy for me, but when the season starts, I'm going to have everything in order, and I will be glued to the TV at 1 o'clock p.m. usually or 4 o'clock um, for these Washington football team games. I'm definitely going to make sure to clear up my schedule for these games. Um, but, yeah, um, Ryan Fitzpatrick has been named the starter. Um, not much of a surprise. It wasn't really that much of a competition. I mean, Fitzpatrick, he did – play better than uh, Taylor Heineke in practice. But I thought in the two preseason games that uh, Taylor Heineke played better out of the two. But um, I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for Ryan Fitzpatrick. I really am. I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a cheer for him as much as I can. I'm supporting whoever the quarterback is under center for the Washington football team. I'm cheering for them. And I think Ryan Fitzpatrick can be good with Curtis Samuel, Terry McLaurin, a healthy Curtis uh, Samuel, Adam Humphreys, Deami, um, Cam Sims, and Logan Thomas, John Bates. we got some weapons, Antonio Gibson. Um, I, I think he can play well. J and J.D. McKissick, Jared Patterson, all those guys, I think they can gel. I think we have – our offense is just a lot better than last year. It's easy. It's this, our offense was awful, so it's not hard to be better, but I think we're substantially better. And I think giving uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick the weapons that we have with a good receiving core, a good running back, I think he should be able to, success, to be successful. I just, I just think the run game is going to be super, super important this year. It always, it always is. But helping him out with the run game, Antonio Gibson, McKissick, and Jared Patterson in the running back room, definitely going to have to help out Ryan Fitzpatrick. I, I like the matchup with the Chargers. I'll get into that, of course, next week. But looking at some of the Chargers numbers, I'm going on a tangent here. Last year is last year, so it's definitely different. They have added some guys up front, but their run defense was pretty darn bad last year. It was bottom half of the league. Gave up about four, four and a half yards per carry. Like I said, last year is last year, but I do think we can run the football in this game against the Chargers. So that's what I'm looking forward to watching football the team to do. But let's get into the roster projection. I'm late to the party. I'm tardy to the party. I'm like the last uh, Washington football team guy to make a roster projection. But I have some different things that everybody else has, to be honest with you. I have some um, different cuts, like one or two different cuts than everybody else. I think everybody else is basically the same on their picks. But we'll get into it. This is not going to take too long. Uh, probably be here for about 10 minutes just going over the roster who I think and then you know Ron Rivera did say some things that, about the defensive end position that we probably will be picking somebody up a veteran um, or that he likes to have a veteran in the room um, so I do think we're going to pick up a, a defensive end from the waiver wire to be honest with you maybe another linebacker a lot of people are hollering or you know asking for KJ Wright I personally don't see that happening but that would be a great addition to the linebacker room the linebackers um, we looked in the preseason games, even last year, it looks like we, we need some more depth at that position. So, um, if they do add a free agent guy, linebacker, that would be great. Um, and a kicker, we need to bring in another kicker. It is what it is on that part. Um, quarterbacks, let's get to it. So we're going to keep three. Um, I don't think the Washington football team has kept two in the last what two, three years. And rightfully so because of the injury history, you know, Alex Smith getting hurt, Cole McCoy getting hurt, Kyle Allen with the broken ankle. Heineke, you know, he's he's been injury prone in his career. So I really think they should keep three as well. Ryan Fitzpatrick, Taylor Heineke, Kyle Allen as quarterback three. Heineke is quarterback two and Ryan Fitzpatrick as the starter. We'll see if Ryan Fitzpatrick can finish the season. I'm rooting for him. Number one quarterback rating under pressure last year. Four and three as a starter. Number five in QBR. So he had a good year last year. 13 touchdowns, eight picks is not great, but it's solid. And we do have a running game, which the Dolphins did not have. And a... The Dolphins had a good defense, but our defense is definitely top five for sure. So we have the pieces around to help out Ryan Fitzpatrick. And Ryan Fitzpatrick said this is the best opportunity that he's had um, with the team. You know, him being a starter and, you know, he said this is the best situation that he's been in. So uh, we'll see how he does. Uh, running backs. This is where I differ from a lot of people. I got Antonio Gibson, of course, Jada McKissick and Jared Patterson. I got three guys at the running back position. Um, I have Peyton Barber being the odd man out. I just think Jared Patterson pushed him out of the room, to be honest with you. And Peyton Barber, now he does one thing really good. And honestly, there's times where he does not get that fourth and one or the third and one. I've, we've all seen it where he hasn't gotten it. But he has, last year he was really good at getting those third and ones, fourth and ones. Had a couple touchdowns last year too. But in the preseason, there was a time where he definitely didn't get the third and one. He did get a um, goal line touchdown. And, um, you know, they tried Antonio Gibson on that third and one or fourth and one. He didn't get it. So there is a concern if we do let Peyton Barber go. Now, the only, the only way Antonio Gibson can get better at those moments of getting that first down on fourth and one, third and one, is by playing. It's not going to happen in practice. It has to happen in a game. Antonio Gibson, the more he plays, the better he gets. He's still learning the position. He's still His vision is still 
improving. So if we really want him to be that third, all three down back or even four downs, fourth and one, a goal line um, type of situations, Antonio Gibson, he has to get those reps and get those moments to improve at that spot for him to be our franchise running back for the next, you know, five, four or five years. Um, Jared Patterson, I think he's capable. He did it in preseason. He got a third and one. He converted on that. And he also converted on a goal line um, touchdown as well. So I think Jared Patterson, he just brings more to the table. He's more of a playmaker. He's more dynamic. He can catch out the backfield. Peyton Barber just doesn't really provide much oomph or pop or sizzle to the roster, to be honest. His game is ugly. It is what it is. It's ugly. His yards per carry is very low, but, you know, he's really good at those short yards. He'll, he had a game against the Eagles. What was it, 17 carries for 29 yards? But he did get a touchdown. He did, he did get a fourth and one. But in my opinion, I just think Jared Patterson does everything or can do everything that Peyton Barber can do and better, in my opinion. I really do. And I think Antonio Gibson is capable of doing the same thing that Peyton Barber does as well. And Peyton Barber, maybe he could get on the practice squad. Who knows? I don't think he'll clear waivers because he is more of a known name with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. People have heard about him. And he did have an 800-yard season a couple years ago with the Tampa Bay Bucs. So he, his, his, he, he's, not, he's not a household name. But coaches and scouts know who he is. He's not like a guy that we that nobody knows about. People have heard of him. So I, I think a team might might just pick him. He might clear waivers. I think it's 50-50 on him. I think I think somebody will pick him up, though, for sure. Um, wide receivers. This is where I differ a little bit with people, too. I got them keeping seven. At, uh, for, the, for the longest, I had them keeping six because I was like, you know, Ron loves him some Peyton Barber. So I, it's a 50-50% chance on Peyton Barber. I probably will be wrong because Ron loves him some Peyton Barber. But wide receivers, I got them keeping seven instead of six. This time, um, for the longest, I had six wide receivers, then I had four running backs. But I just went back and forth, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to just see what happens, man. And, and I got seven right here. I got, of course, Terry, of course, Curtis, of course, Adam. Humphreys, of course, Deami. Cam Sims is a lot. AGG is the sixth guy. They're not going to cut their fourth-round pick from last year. And he played better. He did play well. He played pretty well. He had three catches. Nothing, no, no. Three, three, both games he had like three catches for like thirty-eight yards. He didn't, he didn't have any crazy games, but he did what he was supposed to do. The two-point conversion was good, where he bullied and sunned that guy against the Bengals. Um, then last but not least, I got Dax Mill. And the reason why I got Dax Mill on there is because punt returner is a concern. Now DeAndre Carter, he's capable of doing it as well, but Dax Mill had a heck of a catch in that Ravens game. That was a, that was a great catch. It really was. And they called a flag on the play too. Like his concentration, the ball control. And you watch his film at BYU. He did the same thing at BYU. He has good hands. He has good hands. He's not, he's not like an elite route runner. He's not an elite speed guy. He just gets the job done, honestly. And Dax Milne, I think he can help out receiving. I think he can have like 10 catches this year. That's what I'm aiming for, 10 to 15 catches um, for about 100-some yards and maybe even a touchdown. I think Dax Milne can contribute receiving as well. I and mean, he has great depth, too. So um DeAndre Carter I think he's a guy that might be able to slide on the practice squad Dax Millen too might be able to slide to the practice squad but I got DeAndre Carter possibly going to the practice squad I just don't have him make the roster even though he had a great camp and was decent returning he just didn't really pop nobody had a great punt return to be honest in the in the preseason at all nobody had like a 50 yard or 30 yard punt return I think the best return honestly was the kick return by Jared Patterson Jared Patterson definitely needs to get some run at punt returner I think they need to give him some more reps. And he's been learning from Brian Mitchell. So those are my seven guys. Um, the only guys who are really is a surprise is Dax Mill. AGG, I think we all agree that AGG, for the most part, is going to make the roster. He was their fourth round pick, and he did play better towards the end of pre or in the preseason. He did in the first two games, he played well. The first game, he did drop that two point conversion. The next two games, he made up for it. And he um, is he's okay in special teams. So he's going to have to play special teams for sure. Tight end. Logan Thomas, John Bates, Sammy Reyes. Those are the three guys I got. I like Ricky Seals Jones. I hope he clears waivers and makes the practice, makes the practice squad. They this is the this is the thing where everybody's asking, you know, do you take um are you gonna take a guy with potential or are you gonna take a guy that can immediately help you? Ricky Seals Jones can immediately immediately help you. He has the better hands, he's the better route runner, he's played football before, played in college, played in high school. Sammy Reyes is very raw, bobbles the ball, but he's a better pass blocker. So he hasn't played in the game yet. So we don't know how ready he's going to be under the lights. We just don't know. Maybe they, maybe Ricky Seals Jones clears waivers and Sammy's can sit. Ron loves Sammy's. Sammy's is a fan favorite, but you know, we got to be realistic here. He hasn't played much. I mean, he hasn't played a lot of football. He's still bobbling the ball on catches and he, he has a lot to learn, which is normal. I mean, the guy just started playing football, but he's a physical blocker. He's probably the best, most physical blocker on the team, like Ron said. And um, like I keep saying, DoorDash, the guy's a grinder. He's a dog. He's just a hard worker. He outworks you all the time. Stays after practice on the jugs machine, all kinds of stuff. Caleb Wilson will not make the roster. He might, he'll probably be on the practice squad. And um, they're just going to hope that Ricky Seals Jones can clear waivers and 
um, make the roster, and then they'll probably put Sammy's on the practice squad so he can learn for a year. Um, offensive line, pretty cut and dry here. Sam Cosme, Brandon Sheriff, Cornelius Lucas, Chase Ruye, Eric Flowers, who will be the starting left guard, Wes Schweitzer, backup left guard, Charles Leno, um, starting left tackle, Sadiq Charles, backup, swing, tackle. Can play all positions, basically everything but center. And I got Tyler Larson making it over Keith Ishmael. I've just been hearing that Tyler Larson got more reps with his second and first team than Keith Ishmael has. He was our former fifth round pick. I think he was the was involved. The the pick was the trade with Trent Williams. I think we got we got two fifth round picks and a third round pick. I think he was one of the picks that we used for the fifth round pick. Um, I, I got him being released, and he probably he could definitely make the practice. I don't see anybody really picking up Keith Ishmael, to be honest. Um, so that's about it. Offensive line is nine instead of ten. I think last year we kept ten. I gotta look that up, but I got I got us keep it nine. Uh, defensive tackle here: uh, John Allen, Deron Payne, Matt Ioannidis, Tim Settle. That's easy. So we'll move on from that. Defensive end is where it gets a little um, shaky here, a little um, different and controversial, I guess. Um, James Smith Williams. You can consider him a DT or a DE. He plays both. He has position flex. Um, Chase Young, Montez Sweat, of course. William Bradley King. I got him making the roster, being a backup defensive end. And I got James Smith Williams. And then it could be Shaka Tony or Casey too. I like the way that Shaka Tony played in the last Ravens game. And he played pretty well in the Bengals game too. So I got Shaka Tony making the roster, being that last defensive end. Um, if he doesn't make the roster, he is definitely going to be on the practice squad. Um, guys like Daniel Wise, David Botta, they played well, man. They did. They played well. And Boomi Rotimi as well. They played well in that Ravens game too. They made an impact for sure. Bengals game too. They, they, they played with David Botta really impressed with that block. Phil goal and also the sack on Lamar Jackson. I was thoroughly, thoroughly impressed with David Botta. So if he makes the roster, I wouldn't be surprised, but he definitely will be on the practice squad. Um, if not on the roster, Daniel Wise will be on the practice squad as well. If not on the roster, Boomi Rotimi, he definitely deserves a spot as well. And uh, Ron said he wants a veteran presence at the defensive end spot. So be on, be on alert for um, us signing a uh, defensive end. Casey Tuhill, I just don't think he's going to make the roster. He had a hamstring injury, just hasn't played much. I... And I could be wrong about it, but I don't think he'll make the roster. I got Shaka Tony over him. Linebackers, five, Jamin Davis, Cole Holcomb, John Bostic, Khalid Hudson, and David Mayo. I don't have Jared Norris on there. don't have Jordan Kushnuski. And uh, who was some other linebackers on there? Yeah, I just don't have Jared Norris, and I don't have Kushnuski on there as well. Um, so those are the guys I got at linebacker. Um, cornerback, this is where it gets a little tough here, too. This gets a little tough. And I'm, I'm thinking of Ron Rivera's mind. All the things he said in the press conference where he loves certain guys and he wants guys to play special teams. So this is why I had cornerback this way. Uh, William Jackson, of course, Kendall Fuller, Ben St. Juice, Jimmy Moreland. Those are easy. And Torn McTire, the way he's played, he's just had a heck of a camp. Hopefully, hopefully he's healthy and ready for week one um, with the concussion that he that he suffered. Um, and then last but not least, I got Troy Aki. I got them keeping six guys. They got Troy Aki. They call him Trap. Jack Del Rio loves him. Nate Casher loves him. Ron Rivera loves him. I mean, he was an easy target. Benham and Victor went crazy. James Prochet. Um, they were just taking turns on Triapke, to be honest with you, in the, in the Ravens game. Tyler Huntley, every time he saw Triapke, he was just like, hey, I'm just going to throw the ball up, to be honest with you. And uh, he's just not a good corner. It is what it is. He's super fast, 4-3 speed. We all remember the 40-yard dash. Deion Sanders um, hyping him up in the 40-yard dash, which was pretty funny. But um, I got to make the roster just because of special teams. The odd man out is Danny Johnson and Daryl Roberts. Um, they got to make a decision there between those guys. If it were up to me, I would keep Danny Johnson. But thinking of an Aron Rivera mind, I have him picking Troy Aki, Trapke, uh, for the six corners. Daryl Roberts is not going to make the roster. Maybe he might. I, I think he would actually be picked up by somebody else. Um, so those are the corners I got making it. And then from the safety spot, I got Landon Collins, Cameron Curl, Bobby McCain, DeShazer Everett, and Jeremy Reeves. Derek Forrest will be on a practice squad. Cole Luke is not going to make the roster. Maybe practice squad for him. But the fifth round pick, Derek Forrest out of Cincinnati, just didn't really have a great camp, didn't really stand out, and did not have a great preseason either, um, where he was lost in, on the sauce, on the bootleg play against the Bengals, the bang bang Hamilton helmet hit, which I don't think was his fault. I thought he, did, I thought that was, a, uh, I thought that was a football play. To be honest with you, I thought it was a forced fumble. Definitely would have helped his stock. And then him not playing against the Ravens, I think they can, you know, probably put him on injury reserve if they like. Um, and he could just sit a year in red shirt and get ready for next year and, and improve and learn. So, of course, the special teams guys are Dustin Hopkins, Cam Cheeseman, and um, Dustin, I mean, um, what's his name? Tress Way, the All-Pro. Tress Way. Or, or he should be an All-Pro if he, if he wasn't. But Dustin Hopkins, man, we got to bring in some competition, man. Hasn't been good in practice and just hasn't been good in games for the last couple of years either. So, and I wish him the best. I know there's some things going on with his family. Prayers up for him and his family. 
wish them the best. But like I said, at the end of the day, it's a business. And football is football. If you're not performing, they got to bring somebody else to help out the team. It is what it is. So, um, But, yeah, Dustin Hopkins, he's, he's, he's just got to improve. He's, he's definitely hurting us. So um, little nugget here, 46. You can keep 48 active players on game day. And the roster can be 53 players to 55 on game day. So there might be some guys, like I said, like a Ricky Seals Jones, who might not make the roster and they could put them on a practice squad and then activate them and then have Sam East being street clothes with a clipboard, learning the game or Dax Mill, same thing. DeAndre Carter, if they do just end up keeping six wide receivers, they can hope that Dax Mill makes the practice squad. DeAndre Carter, the same, and they can activate them if they really need them on special teams. And we need a punt returner. We just don't have one. A, a great one. I'll say that Adam Humphreys has done it before. Curtis Samuel has done it before, but we don't really want to risk those guys getting injured. We already have Curtis Samuel with a groin injury. So it's like, yeah, I don't want to really risk him returning punts to be honest with you. So um, you guys let me know if you disagree or agree anything. I know Peyton Barber is probably the biggest one and Trey Apke and some of the defensive linemen as well. And the cornerbacks too. Uh, it's definitely debatable. I got Jeremy Reeves making a roster. I think he deserves a spot. I thought he played pretty decently against the Ravens. He played really, really well last year. His pro football focus grade was one of the highest as a safety uh, than like the last decade uh, when he played against the Cowboys and played against the Panthers. Well, he didn't play well against the Panthers, but when he played against the Cowboys and the Eagles, he had good games. He had solid games for sure. And he was a huge help towards the end of the year. So um, that's about it. I think I got, tw I got 25 on offense and 25 on defense and three on special teams. So 25, 25, 50, 53, 53 man roster right there. I will be going live tomorrow night at 630 with my elite channel members. Make sure you stay tuned in for that. Should be a lot of fun. We'll be reacting to some of the roster, to all the roster cuts and all the roster moves that were made to bring it down to 53. All right, you guys, hail to the football team. Peace.